So today's job is to get the spindle motor and the gearbox off. So, um, not too bad. See down here, I've already got the um, tool release cylinder off. Came off pretty easy, just three bolts. Had to disconnect the air lines to it and the um, the sensor that detects if the tool's in position or not. Got to be a little bit careful of this encoder here. These are an absolute fortune. So transmission's got plenty of oil in it. The pre previous owner topped it off. Then we get down into this mess. So this is the turnac, which actually changes the gear here. You can see the model number on it there. Anyone that needs that. And then down here at the bottom, this is a shot pin. So the shot pin actually goes upwards into the transmission to lock it. And then there's like a little reed switch that detects its position. Obviously all of these have got their own individual connectors, so I've made notes here of all the connectors. I know there's manuals and things, but this thing's so grotty that the uh, most of the numbers have rubbed off the connectors, so let's not chance it. We'll make fresh notes. Um, that's the connector for the encoder there, so that'll have to come off at some point and get cleaned up. But um, yeah, all the airlines, so you've got a... Uh, Two airlines going into there, and then two airlines going into there, and they come over from the the solenoids all the way around on the other side of the machine. So here, these two end ones. So this one here is for the high and the low gear, and this one here is for the shop pin. And you've got the forward and reverse tubes. So you can see here you've got high low gear shift pin tool release and air blast so these two are disconnected at the front and this one is as well i'll um probably replace all of these airlines this one here goes to the edge of the spindle and what that does is it puts positive pressure on the the spindle down through here and what that does is it provides a constant flow of air coming out of here so that none of the crap from machining gets up and kills your spindle bearings so it's quite a neat idea um, whether it works or not I don't know I, I guess it does this spindle seems fine you can see the the belt here that turns the encoder for the spindle there's actually another encoder or encoder up in this motor or i'm led to believe and looking at the cables here it'll um definitely have one by the looks of it so the next step is to um get this box off the motor here and um, disconnect all the wires inside i thought that this was going to be a nice plug that you just undo but actually it's just a strain relief so kind of disappointing but um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, again, more signs of machining wood. I don't know why we need to machine wood on a metal melon machine, but it seems to be the theme. We'll get it all cleaned off and cleaned up. But it's proper caked in crap down here. It's um, years and years of grease and sludge. So the other thing I did was I took the CRT out. The thing weighed a friggin' ton. And every time I want to move the machine a little bit, I have to put this back on so that I can power up and see the screen. So um, I just got an old flat screen monitor I had kicking around plugged in there so I can boot up. But the, um, the cabling on this is actually pretty straightforward. So you've got a power cable for a fan. You've got VGA and the power for the monitor. You have an old DIN style keyboard plug and then the only thing that's really proprietary to this um, whole shebang is this cable here which kind of goes down and it runs 
the jog wheel down in here and then your potentiometers and your e-stop and your cycle start stop buttons so um, it's fairly straightforward it's quite rudimentary in terms of operation I've also been working on the tool changer so here you can see the limit switches on the tool changer so you have a limit switch here for the inwards motion and then at the back here you have a limit switch for the outwards motion and normally there's a a bearing on here which locates in this slot and as the motor behind here actuates this arm it drives the tool changer in and out then what you have is a second motor and this is the one that indexes the tool carousel around and you have two sensors here so these are just inductive sensors and they stick through on the underside of the tool changer here then one detects the position of this motor and then this other one detects the position of the actual tool carousel there's there's a pin that sticks up on tool number one so when it homes it goes back until this sensor makes and then it's homed at tool number one now the reason I got this all off is because the bearings in here are absolutely shot to pieces so this is the tool changer carousel here now typically you have this piece which sits on here and then this slides down into here and then it goes back up into the tool carousel now there's a spacer in here to keep these bearings apart but these bearings are absolutely shot to pieces if you listen to them you can hear them grunching away and there's loads of play in them so I've got some new ones on order and we'll get that fixed now this is the pin I was talking about so when you home the tool changer or the carousel this is what hits the proximity switch to tell it that you're in tool number one now this here sticks through the front plate and that's down by pin number one so it's it's really hard to get this wrong so that tool number one isn't actually tool number one because it's actually on the numeric plate this locates on the numeric plate so you can't get it wrong As you can see these are some of the panels from the the tool changer it's um pretty crusty again it's cleanable we'll get it fixed now on the back of this tool changer we had these rails so this is a really ingenious rail system so it's a v-rail top and bottom and then there's some precision ground wheels here so these run on the the groove backwards and forwards now you can adjust it by this cam here the top ones are in a fixed position so they're always the same and then to tension it you just basically loosen this nut or well, sorry this bolt and then you um, turn this nut here and that's got a cam action that increases the the pressure on the rails now I've started cleaning these rails up they're precision ground it's kind of important that they're in good clean condition now the bearings here are a little bit strange I thought I could I thought I could just press these bearings out and um, put new bearings in these wheels but what it turns out actually is that the inner race of the bearing is actually this wheel so it's been this whole thing is a bearing so the only way to fix it now this is a bit raunchy this bearing and I suspect the others are the same and I've managed to hunt down some replacements actually found these on eBay for um, not a lot of money well brand new they're about 60 70 bucks a piece and I managed to get them between 20 and 35 bucks a piece just haggling around and searching eBay but um, it's a W4X size and they do various different sizes so you've got to watch out for the size they do like a W3X, a W2X and then they do a W4XX and then an XXL so you've got to watch out for that but they're um, they're pretty cool the, the way that they're designed is they've got this channel so if any crap gets in there it kind of it deals with it pretty well so I'm going to replace all those 
I'm replacing the bearings that go on here for the carousel and then the bearing that goes in here as well will be replaced and um, in here to open and close this door there's a little bearing that runs in there now that is probably the most shot bearing on the whole machine the thing is so tore up that it's falling apart so they've all been put on order they should be coming in soon while I'm waiting on that stuff I'm gonna get all these rails cleaned up get the motor and the gearbox off and just keep clean okay time to take the motor off so I got my handy little harbour freight lift and um, got the lifting bolts in here there's one there one round the back and then um, we're gonna give this a shot Okay, let's push it back. She's back. I'm going to lower the motor down. Word. Well, the motor's out. This thing's pretty dirty, and the fan is caked in gunge. I think when we put this back together, we'll come up with some kind of filter system for this. I think Atman did a nice job on his one. Did a pretty cool filter. I think we'll copy him a little bit. I guess it's kind of flattery, right? Look at the gunge in here. This is just years and years of grime. Lots and lots of scraping. Ball screw looks in fairly good shape and looks like the oil is working okay. So. Hopefully it's not completely shot. Last thing I want to do is change these rails because I'm sure they're horrendously expensive. I know the ball screws are very expensive too. But it's an old machine. We'll do the best we can with it. I think it will be um, fairly good when it's done. Time to get scraping. So operation commence warp speed cleaning mode. Here you can see me sped up really, really fast, just getting stuck in and cleaning out this whole head assembly. Once the um, motor in the gearbox was off, you could really see all the junk that was down in there. And it was just years and years of dirt and grime just built up all over the head. And um, I had to get it all cleaned out. So I started off with a scraper 
and just kept scraping away and got the worst of it out. Then um, I hit it with the purple power in the squirty bottle and started using some like old rags just to clean out as much as I can. And you know all the oil lines were filthy. I had to disconnect all of those. And once they were disconnected, I blew them all out and checked the fittings. And you know just worked through it step by step. It was a pretty boring and laborious process which is why I've kind of sped this up you probably don't want to sit here and watch me go at this thing for hours but in the end I got it all cleaned up and it was looking pretty good um, the paint you know it's old but surprisingly it actually came up pretty good it's kind of a grey white colour and um, yeah I'm I'm fairly happy with the way it came out. Just a lot of elbow grease and um, pretty soul destroying to go through it step by step like that. But as you can see, uh, I've got some photographs at the end of the video, just showing the before and the after of how this all started and ended up. And you can see there's like oil that had leaked out of the gearbox and fibers from the belts and bits of wood sawdust in there and it all kind of amalgamated together and got really really nasty so I just had to get in there and get it all out but you'll see in the, the nice high resolution photos at the end that it, it came out very good so I might paint this up at the end and change the colour you know I'm, I'm considering scraping down all the castings and actually painting everything again because so much of the paint has come off this machine it looks pretty rough around the edges and um, after doing all this work I'd like it to kind of look nice at the end so you know we'll see how it goes and um, here are the photos right now so next step is to um, split the motor in the gearbox and rebuild each one and um, I'll make some videos doing that and show you how it all comes together you know I've not done it before so I'll be working it out as a go but hopefully it helps some of you guys out there with these older Bridgeport machines